Let's yep. get to our viewers' Let's questions. Loads of emails in. Fiona's first up. My partner earns more than me and over 40,000 uh, a year. So in light of the new budget, should I give the majority of our tax credits to him? I would, because obviously you can be taxed as a single person and you can be taxed as a couple. In this instance, it sounds to me like they would be more it, it would be more advantageous if they were ta taxed as a couple. So they can just they can do that very st simply. You just contact Revenue, explain that you're married, you want to be taxed as a couple, and Revenue do the rest. She didn't say married, but presume husband means partner. That wouldn't happen if you weren't uh, husband and wife. I, I, actually, I think you probably have to be married. Yeah. yeah um, okay. I, sorry, I, yeah. I, I made the assumption yeah. there yeah. that they were yeah. married, mm -hmm. but if they're not married. It makes it probably more problematic. Okay, so it's not the same for two single. Like, if you're in no, a relationship, see, like, let's say if somebody's earning twenty five thousand and yeah. someone's earning seventy five thousand, they have different uh, credits. They pay tax at different rates, so it would be more advantageous for them to pay tax as a couple. Okay, of all right. Uh, John was in touch. I saw the news last week about Bank of Ireland being fined over tracker mortgage failings. I have my mortgage with a different bank, but during the last recession, we constantly asked to go on a tracker mortgage as our mortgage had gone astronomically high, being fixed, being stuck in a fixed rate and were refused time and time again. We eventually had to go on interest-only payments to survive, which later affected our credit and delayed us trying to buy a new house. Should we have been allowed to go on a tracker at the time? Well, it's very hard to say definitively, but the bottom line here is Bank of Ireland were fined because they unfairly forced people who were on trackers off trackers or refused to allow people who were legally obliged, who were legally entitled to trackers back onto trackers. So let's say if you if you were on a tracker and then you went onto a fixed rate and then you were supposed to be put back on a tracker after the fixed rate ended and a lot of the banks didn't put people back on the tra on the trackers. They put them on variable rates, which meant that they ended up paying more. And that only came to light after a very l lengthy central bank investigation. Now, in this instance, this person doesn't say they were on a tracker, but they asked, could they go on to a tracker? Now, that's a slightly different thing because once the tracker gravy train ended, the banks were under yeah. no obligation to put you on one. They could only they were only under an obligation to put you on one if you'd been on one previously. So I don't think this person has any comeback mm -hmm. unless they were on a tracker and were unfairly forced off it by the bank. Well. Okay. Uh, Ray has emailed in to say, I am with a company that is forever banging on about its green credentials. But what I can't understand is why they are blaming higher gas prices for their price increases if all their energy comes from Irish wind. That's a very good point because you see that a lot. A lot of the companies would, would say 100% of our energy comes from wind. And you think, okay, well then why would you be charging more if there's a war in Ukraine or if the gas mm. prices in, in, in the East are going up? And the bottom line is that all renewable energy prices across all of Europe are pegged to gas prices so you have you uh, so no matter what uh, price the the renewable energies are they can charge the same price as gas uh, and, and the reason why that was put in place was to incentivize people to create renewable energies because it meant that if you were producing sol a solar or wind, you knew you were guaranteed a high price. And that made sense when gas prices were kind of at a, at a mid middling level. Um, but now the gas prices are wildly out of sync yeah. with, with reality. That sent the, the renewable prices soaring. Uh, so the European Union is looking to decouple the price of gas with the price of renewables, and that, that should ultimately bring down the price of wind power and solar power. Okay, okay. Uh, Stephanie was in touch as well. She said, I keep hearing about the benefits of switching energy providers, but I have already done that this year. Is there anything else I can do to save myself some money this winter? Well, that's, that's, that's a question that a lot of people are asking. So there's a couple of simple things that people should do. First off, I think if you, if you had your attic insulated in the 19, 1980s or 1990s or even 15 years ago, you might, might, might want to consider doing it again because the technology behind uh, attic it's insulation like has, it's 40 years ago if you got it done uh, in the has 80s. come a long way. Yeah. But not only that, under, under the grant system in place from the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, you get 80% of whatever you spend on getting your attic insulated back. You get so 80? 80%. 80. So let's say oh. if you spend a grand insulating your attic again and putting in the super high-tech insulation, the government will give you back 800 euros. Oh You'll God, save no yourself around 200 in year one as a result of the better insulation. So after the first year, you're already quids in. Other things that you can do, and I know poor old Eamon, Eamon Ryan got it in the neck when he said people could have a shorter shower. But the <laughs> difference between, like you're laughing, but the difference between having I a... I need a longer shower than you the do, Connor, well, let's you be got hair. Exactly. The difference between a 10-minute shower and an 8-minute shower spread over the course of a year is around 50 quid. So if there's four people in the house and they all have an eight minute shower, and if you were super fast, Karen. I, well, on the days I'm not washing my hair as every woman Eight does, minutes versus very 10 fast. minutes save you 50 quid over the course of the year. Four people in the house, you're looking at saving 200 quid over the course of the year. And there's all okay. these different incremental steps. So, you know, you, you, and, and they all sound silly when you say them on their own. 
like, you know, put the lid on the pot or turn down your, th your thermostat by two degrees, that'll save you about 120 quid a year. So all of these different measures that people... Stupid things like if you leave your phone charging beside your bed yeah. and you leave it in overnight... It doesn't you... actually cost as much as... Like sometimes oh. you say, oh, leaving stuff on standby is going to yes, cost you... Yes, that like, thing. Actually, the cost of, re of, re of recharging your phone is buttons. Oh, like it's it? really, really <laughs> small. And TV's on standby? Again... In, in times past, it would have eaten away at energy. Now, it's, it's energy that you're, you're leaching that you don't have to. Like so, but you're, you're not going to save yourself a lot of money. You might, because technology has improved. You'll still, you might still save yourself a couple of percent off the annual cost. And of course, with energy prices now costing 4,000 euros, even 1% or 2%, Worth doing. So if you can save yourself a few bob by turning the stuff off standby, it's worth doing. Okay. Yeah, and for health reasons, you shouldn't have your phone near your head when you're sleeping at night. I oh, know. I was actually dangerous stuff. That. Yeah. No, you shouldn't do that. Okay. Um, Chris has emailed in to say I have a variable rate mortgage, and I'm wondering if you think I should fix it with rates increasing, or would I be better off gambling on rates coming down again next year? The word that leaps off the page there is gambling, because you should never <laughs> gamble on your mortgage. So the only reason ah. you fix is because you want security, and you say, okay, if I fix for next three years or five years or 10 years at a rate of 1,200 euros a month, say, and I know I'll be able to pay that for, 12, uh, for the next five years. You do that to give yourself financial stability and security. You never try and second guess the market. Now, I remember years back, I remember writing a piece for the Irish Times and I said, oh my God, what are we going to do, lads, when interest rates hit 5%? We're all going to be screwed. And of course, as soon as I wrote the article and it appeared in the Irish Times, interest rates just went off a cliff and they fell, <laughs> fell, 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 fell. And I was like, well, that article was really dumb because I thought, oh, with all the experts were saying interest rates were going to go up. At the moment, all the interest experts are saying interest rates are going to go up. It certainly looks like they're going to go up again in, before Christmas and then again in the new year. But as I say, you don't try and gamble with the market. You do what's right for yourself in terms of financial security and stability. Bottom line is the person would probably be better off fixing because we're going into a mar an era of spiralling mm -hmm. interest rate sites. But bear in mind, I've said that before and was entirely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just very quickly, disclaimer. Sharon and Galway said, I'm looking to book my holidays for next year, but is it too early to do that? Or will I get better value if I wait until closer to the departure date? No, it's not oh. too early. It's like always book it. But the thing is, like people always, the dream is getting the last minute holiday for a song, right? Which yeah. doesn't yeah. happen. That's, it that's never that's happens. That's that's somebody's rubbish. cancellation, surely. To it, well, yeah, absolutely. Or else you end up in some really manky yeah. place that they couldn't sell. <laughs> so if you, if you know where you want to go and you have a book it now, pay a small deposit and then chip away at it over the course of the next eight or nine months. I know it seems crazy to be planning for your holidays in 2023 when the holidays for 2022 have barely ended. But I personally believe it makes uh, it makes a great deal of economic sense. And also it's nice to have something to look yeah, forward so to. Nice exactly. Look forward to. Exactly. Especially when we're facing into the winter.